Alright guys, here we have some mastery badge fun with the E75. This is probably my second game back with it since I have recently rebought it. And uh, already we've scored a hit on the T57 Heavy. In this game, it's all about preserving our health because we are against tier 10 enemies. But the T57 Heavy is more than nice enough to stand in front of us and let our magnificent 128mm tear him apart. We've already took him down to about half health, and it looks like we're going to get to put in a third shot. No, we are not. He decides to back off. But the Boar Sig, once again, more than ample to stay there. Let us pick him off. The C-75's gun, despite having a long aim time and debatable accuracy, has some, at least for me, treats me very well. As it is the same gun off the uh, Boar Sig and the Stock Yag Tiger. And there we go, taking out the Boar Sig. And... Right now, once again, we're still preserving our health. We don't want to move up too hastily, because if we do that, then we endanger ourselves to all these dangerous TDs over here. And there's another guy gone. That boar sick bites to dust, and I th yeah, now we're going to move up. Because we've taken out a lot of the tank destroyers, and all they have left are non-tank destroyer tanks, so we don't got to worry too much. And the E75 is fairly mobile, so, you know, you can move up and make some aggressive pushes. And it has great frontal armor, which is a definite good and a heavy. Very well angled. Even the bottom plate is very well angled. It is weak, though. It is a weak spot. Now, the stock D54, we can abuse those turret cheeks. Those nice, juicy cheeks. Abusing those, and we're going to keep, you know, sort of side-scraping to him. But what I'm really worried about is the 57 heavy. I know he's on my right, which is why I'm not pushing around and just getting his flank. I see I'm still looking, still looking, and then a 432 comes out of nowhere, but you see he's firing heat ammo, so we can't protect against 300 plus millimeter of penetration too much, even with this well of armor, but like I said, I'm worried about the 57 heavy, and he's unloading on somebody else. Puts one into me. The object 430 misses his shot again, or it bounces my gun. But the E-75's armor held up very well there. We did not lose a lot of our hit points for how much fire we took. Whereas if we would have been an M103, we might as we probably would have lost a lot more health. And this is once again, I'm worried about that 57 heavy. Because I know he's still over here, so what am I going to do? I, I think he's reloading, but right here I figured out he wasn't. So I just had to immediately rush forward, get my bottom plate hidden right in front of the 430. And now he really doesn't have anywhere to shoot me. And I'm about to reload, so taking him out and already we've had a pretty good game just by just by itself we have uh, lost more than half our health but I feel like if we were in other tier 9 heavy tanks we might have lost more than half our health or maybe even died to the 57 heavy and the 430 so all in all game's going pretty well so far however for our team that's uh, not going as well. We want our flank, obviously, but our team is uh, not doing so bright on the other flank. They're, they're they're holding on, but they're not they're not winning it. So we need to go back through the middle and quickly start helping flank the enemy. Make sure not to take any fall damage there. It's kind of a risky. I just kind of rushed over the hill, but um, at least I didn't take any damage. So now we saw there are plenty of tanks in the middle and plenty of tanks towards our base. So what are we going to do? We're going to definitely go for the middle of the map right here. It'll be an excellent flanking opportunity. And what tank doesn't like to shoot others in the back? So this works out perfectly for us. See our target right there. Put one into what looked like a Pershing, if I'm not mistaken. Pershing or a T-32. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah, it's T-32. This 232 is about to bite the dust. Yep. Got him. Now we're on our... What are we on? Our fifth kill now. We're very close to a top gun now. So... I think our team has a pretty good grasp on the map. Like I said, we're still not winning this though, so... I need to come into the middle and take out... Whatever is up here. I think it's the F4202. Yes, there we go. Their tier 10 medium is gone. Tier 10 mediums tend to tend to be very clutch at, towards the end of close games because they have the mobility and the penetration to change the tide of the game. So taking him out was a very big deal. And we just earned ourselves a top gun. So now we're just heading back to base, seeing if we can find anybody else who might be snooping around. And we did just get detected, so 
we know there's somebody in front of us somewhere. But if we backed up, uh, I feel like we might have just gotten killed by them. Because the E-75 is not back up that fast, and we would have been going uphill. So, figured why not go forward. I saw where the heavy tank was. He can't shoot me, so... We are going to progress over here and defend the base. Yep, and the AT-15 is here. E-75 also has decent gun depression. I want to say it has around 7-ish degrees, a little bit more, a little less. Doesn't matter though, it's very, uh, very good for the tank. Now the, e now, the tank that we saw over there, which happened to be an E100, gets our side, because I did, I did not think he would come all the way up, but I have loaded APCR, so I can penetrate him pretty well much wherever I want to, but I have to hit my shot, obviously, for that to happen, right, but I missed. Now, will he hit his next shot? That's, that, that's the question. Will he bounce? Nope, he doesn't get a chance, because our lovely teammate kills him, and thank you for that, because he probably would have killed me, because undoubtedly he might have had heat loaded. So, all in all, pretty good game. Uh, the E-75's armor held up very well for me there. Um, obviously, you can't defend against uh, an E-100 shell from the side. The uh, E-75 has good side armor, but it's it's very flat. It's very easily penned. But when angled well, it's extremely strong. And the RD drowns himself, which does not shock me. And that is the game. So that was a pretty solid game in our E75. Let's see what kind of rewards we get. We make a, a healthy amount of coin there. Got our Master Gunner. Ooh, and we got a Defender. Ooh, we got an achievement. Got the Defender achievement. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was new with one of the recent patches. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay, do it three times. So we got the Master Gunner, the Mastery Badge, the Top Gun, the Steel Wall, and the Defender Medal. All in all, some great medals to get. Top Gun Medal, Steel Wall are always great medals to see. And the Defender Medal, too, because defending bases, uh, you know, it's always iffy. You never know if you're going to get flanked like I did or if your team's going to help out. So getting a Defender Medal definitely, definitely was a good thing there. The 75 is undoubtedly one of my favorite Tier 9 heavies. It's probably the best tier 9 heavy. The M103 gives it a run for its money, but um, yeah, all in all, it's it's definitely one of the most solid tanks any way you look at it. Alrighty, I'm looking at our rewards. We finished just under 5,000 damage with some assistance, 6 kills, and a healthy amount of experience. Um, ammo didn't cost too much. Repairs were a little much, but uh, all in all, the E75 did very well for the matchup it was given. We survived two engagements with two tier 10 heavies, that 57 heavy and that E100. The E100 was helped out by a teammate, however, and... Uh, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the E75 is just amazingly strong and it really, really excels as a tier 9 heavy. Well guys, that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed this gameplay with some uh, after game commentary on it. My first try at this, so hopefully I did it well. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.